over the course of the seven months that we were there, four teams of officers were created, consisting of about 70 to 80 officers on each team. And one of the challenges was to get to know one another, build trust, understand one another's capabilities and competence leading up to the training and deployment so that we would be best prepared to accomplish the mission. Every aspect of this mission was historic in some sense for the Public Health Service. And I think one of the most unique things about this mission was that every officer who deployed wanted to be there. Uh, despite the risks, despite the danger, despite the unknown and being away from family. The mission of Team One was to open and operate the Monrovia Medical Unit, which was a 25-bed healthcare facility to treat people infected with the Ebola viral disease that were healthcare workers, either Liberian nationals or internationals that were going to be working with non-governmental organizations to stem the tide of the Ebola epidemic. And as President Obama called us, we were hope multipliers because just having that facility available gave people that security that if they were a healthcare worker that was risking their life, that they would be treated in a more Western facility with some Western therapies and would have a chance of survival. The attitude about your job was that you did whatever needed to be done. Whatever you saw needed to be done, you did it. Whatever you were asked to do, you did it. So if there was trash to be emptied, you just emptied the trash. Whoever saw the trash first emptied it. And sometimes it was almost like a contest. We were all uh, consummate professionals. The last day before we left, we had a banquet. And I said, I'd never been a part of a group like that, that was that large, and everybody pulled their weight. There was not one slacker. There was not one dullard. There wasn't one lazy person or intransigent person. Everybody pulled together, got along, did their jobs. It was magical. Team One physically designed the hospital and got it up and running. Our mission was to continue building on their hard work and not to try to make modifications and changes where it wasn't necessary. So our team motto was building on excellence. Our mission was to take care of healthcare providers. And healthcare providers was kind of a loose term uh, in a sense that the, the mission in Ebola treatment units, what we call ETUs, is you need all kinds of people to care for it, not just the clinicians. You need the boot scrubbers, the people who are washing the laundry, the Ebola positive laundry, the Ebola positive boots, because even though you get deconned and you're physically in your PPE, there's still a potential that you're carrying Ebola out. So those workers are still at very high risk of contracting Ebola. So we would have clinicians, we would have physicians, we would have nurses, we would have boot scrubbers, we would have admin people, because admin people, they might not physically be going in to provide direct nursing care or physician care, but they might be trying to complete a survey that needs to be done for the Ministry of Health. The first time in the Ebola ward, it was very emotional for me because I couldn't believe I was, I was there. I was afforded an uh, opportunity to give back, to give back what has been given to me. When I approached the patient in the ward, it was like very natural. I didn't expect it to be like that, even with a PPE on. It was natural to care and to comfort and to reach out to them and, and to make them feel better, make them feel that they matter, that, that they're, they're still human, even though they had Ebola. 
whenever we entered in, in the ward, they were so lonely. They were so grateful to see a human being in the room. So they wanted to see us and they, didn't, they, they couldn't take their eyes off of us and they didn't want us to leave. So they were happy that we were there. The mission of Team 3 was to continue managing the Monrovia Medical Unit and providing care. When we arrived, we actually had two Ebola patients there already. So we kind of picked up right from the get-go of staffing and managing the unit. Every officer's job on the team was equally important. Regardless of whether you were a provider going back and caring for the patients that we had in the treatment unit, regardless of whether you were a safety officer that was spraying down your teammates or spraying down surfaces inside the high-risk area. We could not accomplish that mission without logistics, uh, without people ensuring that we had the protective equipment that we needed to function in that environment. We could not function without our planning people that were reporting our accomplishments on a daily basis to our command element within the country and, and back home. We could not accomplish the mission without our administrative folks that were maintaining personnel accountability and making sure that the officers that we had on the team were, were well and, and were accounted for over the time that we were there. Everybody that contributed to that mission, regardless of the job they did, saved lives. The training that we went through prior to leaving for Liberia was eye-opening. We're all fairly good at our jobs in, in, in terms of promoting and protecting public health. We generally have a good sense of things, but the training was incredible in trying to put us in that Ebola treatment unit scenario. It was eye-opening. And uh, they had dummies there with moulage to demonstrate blood and fecal matter and vomitus and for us to be in the personal protective gear and having to move around and the trainers are just on us and sometimes we thought it was overkill. There were times that we had the audacity to say, that's not how it's going to be. Now who are we to say that's not how it's going to be? Like you knew, <laughs> who else has worked in an Ebola treatment unit? <laughs> and then we went to Liberia and then we stepped across that line between the, the, the clean side to the hot zone. And it was a realization like, oh, man, am I glad I paid attention in Atlanta at that CDC course because it saved my butt. It, it honed me and it tempered my, uh, my zeal. It just, it offered clarity. We had one survivor. Her name was Marfan. It was a very sad story. She lost two brothers to Ebola. Both of those brothers were in the ETU, and she made it out. She became almost like a symbol of, of, of success for us. And I remember her being at our change of command ceremony when we transitioned from Team 3 to Team 4. And I, I don't think anybody on Team 3 will, will ever forget her name. The MMU had a wall to commemorate the survivors they made it out of the unit, and it was blue with yellow handprints, one for each survivor that made it out. It was very poignant, and when, when it came time, she walked over, and I had the, the bucket held out, and she put on the glove and put her hand in this, this shallow bucket and placed her handprint on the wall. It, it was a signifying moment for her surviving this, this extremely deadly disease. One of the special things that Team One left behind was a Monrovia Medical Unit mural. And it's a mural in the sense that it was drawn on a, on a sheet, and it's the outline of the MMU with stars above it. And the stars represent each of the patients that were admitted to the Monrovia Medical Unit. And the special thing about those stars is that if they have a yellow halo, 
those were patients that we lost. So one of the nice things that we did and to help officers cope with the loss of our patient was we had a service and then we all quietly walked by this mural in the command tent and paid our respects to all of those survivors as well as those patients that we had lost. The last couple of days of our deployment, I felt like I was sort of in denial because I did not want to leave. It's so hard to believe that one can adapt and can make a living and adopt a, a new way of living in a foreign land with people that you had never met before in your life. It became part of me, it became part of my life. And so the idea of having to plan a transition plan for Team 4 was in a way difficult because it made us realize that soon we had to come home. But at the same time you're thinking, but this is home. This is where I've lived day in and day out, you know, the last 40 days. It was difficult to, to leave a job that was yours, to leave a job that had so much meaning, to leave a job that, that had become part of you. Team 4's mission was to train the Ministry of Health, but also to close the MMU and leave. The idea was, after we trained their personnel to operate our hospital, we would leave the hospital behind for them. Just as we transitioned with Team 3, we were going to transition Ministry of Health into basically Team 5, but that is not how it happened. Ministry of Health decided that they didn't want the facility, so we, we shifted gears. We went from giving them our entire operating hospital to simply packing everything into boxes for them to ship the material off to other hospitals. Team 4 had a unique opportunity and a humbling privilege to be the last team to leave the MMU. And we knew that we were representing all the other teams. While we were eager, to go home and return to our families. The MMU had become a home away from home and our team members have become our new family. So it was a bittersweet moment when it was time to leave. The night before I came home to help myself emotionally, with everything that I experienced and to get myself prepared to come home, I, I wrote a poem. West Africa, hot and humid, broken to her knees. Fever, pain, fear of the unknown and of the known. Death, death all around. World love, kindness shining bright on her. Bringing gentle hands and loving hearts. West Africa, hot and humid, rising above the pain, each day filled with hope and determination. Goodbye, goodbye Ebola, release your grip and we bid you farewell.